All right, here are solutions for quiz seven for Math 243. Uh, we're dealing with rainfall in Texas. So I randomly select 10 cities in Texas, measured their rainfall in 1990. And then in 2020, I went back and I selected 10 more cities. So that's important. The fact that these are different cities here is telling us that we have independent data. It's not like I went back to the exact same cities, in which case I would have the match pairs design independent data. Um, test the claim that there were that there was more rainfall in 1990 than in 2020. So more is kind of telling me it's going to be a right tail test here. Assume a 90% level of certainty, and we're going to follow the steps below. So first off, is it dependent or independent data? Well, as I said up here, it's independent. And I mean, the short answer for why um, is because it was different cities. Because different cities, who needs to use proper English? Because different cities in 2020. Sure. State the null and alternative hypotheses. Well, my null hypothesis, maybe I'll start with my alternative hypothesis. Uh, my alternative hypothesis is that mu of 1990 is, what did I say, test the claim there was more rainfall in 1990. So greater than mu of 2020. Uh, my null hypothesis was, nah, there wasn't more rainfall in 1990. The mu's are the same. Mu of 1990 equals mu of 2020. Sure. Sketch the, oh, I guess because I put a greater than sign here, it's a right-tailed test. Although I don't even know that you need to write this here, especially if you have your calculator draw the pictures for you. Sketch the appropriate picture for the p-value method of hypothesis testing. You betcha. There's my approximately normal distribution. I'm going to throw zero in the middle and to get the rest of my numbers. What I'll do is first enter all my data. So stat and then edit. And what I did is I typed 1990 data into L1 and 2020 data into L2. Uh, and what I want to do is hit stat and then go over to tests. And this is going to be a two sample t test uh, because, again, it's independent data. And I have the data itself 1990 is in L1, 2020 is in L2. And my claim is that 1990 is greater than 2020. I always select no here because I have no reason to believe that the standard deviations are the same in the two years. Then I'll go down here and draw. And it's going to slowly draw my distribution and then give me a test statistic and shade to the right of that test statistic. See that it's pretty big here. These don't really need to be drawn to scale. Uh, T is equal to 0 0.5119. And my p-value, the area over here to the right, is about 30%. 30.75%. And then state your conclusion, include all the stuff that we always include. I'm going to rewrite that a little bit. Um, so because my p-value is greater than alpha, because the p-value was 30-ish percent, and alpha is only 10 percent, Uh, there's not sufficient evidence. My p-value is greater than alpha. There's not enough evidence to reject the whole null hypothesis. And so what that means is I cannot conclude that, what it was my claim, uh, there was more rainfall in 1990 than 2020. Uh, and I think that is everything for problem one. Then you come down here to problem two, and it says, now use the same data as above, but assume I collected the data by using the same 10 cities. That's important. This tells you that now it is dependent data. All right? if I chose, what is this, in Texas? Uh, I think this was in Texas. Yeah, in Texas. So if I chose Austin as the first city, my first observation in 1990 is Austin, and my first observation in 2020 is Austin, so it makes sense to subtract those two data points, I can change the two sets of data into a single set of data by doing 10 minus 20 gives me negative 10, 20 minus 15 gives me 5, 25 minus 10 is 15, 10, 10, negative 5, 0, negative 10, 10, and 15. And I've actually already done this, as I think I mentioned earlier. If you go stat, edit, and look at L3, what I did is I said I want L3 to be L1 minus L2 and then it populates this list for me and it's a good little check negative 10 5 15 10 10 negative 5 0 negative 10 10 and 15 make sure you see the same numbers there and there 
That gives you confidence that you typed in your observations originally correctly. Uh, so now I want to make a 99% confidence interval for how much more rain there was in 1990. So is it dependent or independent? Now it's dependent, as I kind of wrote up here, so probably didn't need to repeat. And it's because of the same cities. Let's get to the appropriate picture. Sure. So for my picture, I want the point estimate in the middle. And that will come out of my calculator, actually from subtracting numbers in my calculator. You hit stat and then tests. Actually, no, I don't need to subtract in this one. Stat and then test and then T interval. I want a T interval on the data that's in L3. That's where the differences are. And it's a 99% confidence interval as stated up here. If I hit calculate, it'll spit out my answers for me, both the bounds of the interval and the point estimate. The bounds go from negative 5 point nine two eight all the way up to thirteen point nine two eight the middle being four here and then I know this is a ninety nine percent confidence interval so that's how much area I want to shade in the middle of the distribution so there's a picture and then interpret your answer make clear what negative numbers mean essentially so I would say I am ninety nine percent sure or confident or certain that there was between and this negative 5.928 refers to less rainfall in 1990 than 2020 and this 13.928 refers to more rainfall in 1990 than 2020 so there was between 5.928 less I think these are inches and 13.928 more inches of rainfall in Texas in 1990 than 2020. And I believe that's the last thing it asked for. So I suppose that would end this quiz.